if there's any stretch of the Colorado River that the most people can identify with, it's the Grand Canyon. Seven million people a year peer over the rims. 25,000 people a year float the river. Thousands more backpack. 11 tribes are directly connected to that place as either origin stories or where they go as they pass from this life to the next. American Rivers named the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon as the number one most endangered river in America this year. And the Grand Canyon is really telling us that if we don't take care of the environment across the basin, water supply will get more difficult, water quality will become more challenging. Society as it has grown is going to be challenged to survive in a place that is really a harsh environment for people to live in. The background here is a river in Grand Canyon National Park that's been regulated by Glen Canyon Dam since 1963. The dam, in addition to regulating the flow, blocks all the sediment supply. The backdrop for the studies of sediment in sandbars in Grand Canyon is this what we call sediment deficit situation, lack of sediment supply. The sand and sediment in the canyon is really the foundation of the ecosystem overall. Insect species, invertebrates, that feed fish, bird life that depends on the insects and the invertebrates also that are in there. The web of life in some ways starts with the sand and sediment in the canyon. In April, the Bureau of Reclamation conducted a high flow experiment. Bypass tubes were opened at the Glen Canyon Dam for three days releasing a torrent of water designed to dislodge sediment deposits collecting at the confluence of the Perea River upstream from Grand Canyon National Park. The, the lack of a high flow experiment in the last six years has really taken a toll on the condition of beaches and sandbars and the sediment transport in the canyon. And that affects the entire ecosystem. At the same time that sandbars are eroding in Grand Canyon, dropping reservoir levels have exposed decades of lake sediment deposited behind Lake Mead. This is a, a very unique segment of river. It's gone back and forth between being a river to being a reservoir to back uh, to being a river again. This has periodically been flooded by Lake Mead. That's what we see on the banks here is, is, the, is the lake bottom sediment um, from Lake Mead. But then when Lake Mead dropped, um, and it has dropped a lot over the last 20 years, the Colorado River cut back through that sediment. Down here, we're really looking at sediment accumulation and possibly some sediment erosion during the high flow. At the bottom of this hole here is a sonar unit, and it's sending out uh, acoustic pulses. It's measuring the depth of the water. And at the same time, we're measuring our position with GPS antennas. Paul Graham's team is mapping the riverbed before and after the high flow to see how much sediment from the Peria River is redistributed to this western reach of the Grand Canyon. We're coming into the, the Colorado River Delta in Lake Mead. The muddy water here is the tail end of the high flow coming out of the Colorado River and Grand Canyon. These are the sandbars from Grand Canyon. This is the sediment that came from the upper basin, Korea River sediment, sediment from Grand Canyon, that uh, probably deposited on a previous high flow. The Colorado River could be argued it deposits some of the most sand and sediment of any river system in the world. It's basically draining the entire Rocky Mountain West, Intermountain West, so it carried a, a, a significant amount of sand and sediment um, every year, every, every flooding season, you know, every snowmelt. Snow is roughly 80% of all the water in the Colorado River system. And with that snowpack declining, that means river flows are declining too. This year's extraordinary snowpack was a welcome relief. The large runoffs will ease concerns around Lake Powell for now, which had been inching towards minimum power pool. One good year is not enough to make up for 20 years of drought. Yeah, we're not out of the drought. We've got incredible snowpack. If we didn't have that amount of water coming in, it wouldn't have been possible to do the high flow this spring. But the, but the reservoirs, they're both down hundreds of feet. So they're not gonna refill. 
but it will help a lot. With the Southwest being the fastest growing region in the country, and 40 million people depending on this resource in order to sustain life, we need to reevaluate how water is being used across the Colorado River system. I think it really becomes a spirit of living within our means rather than living with the river we wish we had, because the river we wish we had is gone.